December 31st, 1884 dawned, the Hong family awoke to find that their cook, Molly, had not made their breakfast. So the family dressed and went to the servants' quarters out back, and the door was unlocked, and the quarters were in disarray. They were just about to look beyond the gate which had been left open when something caught their eye between the back of the outhouse and the back fence. That was where they found Molly's body in a pool of blood against the white snow. And she was polished off with the sharp side of a nearby ax. The killings went over the course of almost a full year. There were nine attacks and eight deaths. I think the reason behind uh, why it went on for so long was sort of that ingrained attitude toward people of color. Law enforcement behaved very schizophrenic with response to these kinds of this kind of violence violence against women um just didn't particularly count one of the things you can look at though to get a good picture of this time period is the rising level of lynchings that you see year to year from the 1870s onward um and it, it gets really bad in the 1890s you're watching if you take a look at those lynching statistics the way in which domestic terrorism uh, against black men and black women were, was being used to control the population. The killer took up killing once again in August of that year. This time, Rebecca Rainey was sandbagged in one consciousness. The killer didn't go after her. He instead went after her daughter, Mary. Sandbagged her, dragged her into the around behind the washroom, lifted up her nightdress after lobotomizing her through the ear and through the temple, and then realized in the course of his rape that he was raping an 11-year-old girl. It was Mary's death that turned the tide of sentiment in the city of Austin. Somehow it no longer mattered that these were serving class or mulatto, mixed breed or African-Americans. This was an 11 year old girl and this had to stop. The city marshal was fired, another one hired in his place. Pinkerton detectives were brought in. 400 arrests were made in connection with these crimes. None of the suspects panned out. Really, at the turn of the century, in the late 1800s and early 1900s, police were not well educated. Um, certainly most of them didn't have college degrees. They were really hamstrung by a lot of different things besides the lack of witnesses. I think it was really difficult for them to, um, you know, figure out like what the motivation was. You know, it was sexual in nature, but it was so violent, it seemed very personal. The idea of someone killing in the same way over and over again, this, this, was, this was new to law enforcement. They just considered it coincidence or copycats or something like that, and they really didn't know what to make of, of anything like it. It was a savagery that no one had ever seen. Back then, they didn't do any real psychological portraits of these people, so we really don't know very much about what influenced them or why they, why they did what they did. The communication between either departments and the ability to, to find a pattern was almost impossible, you know, before the turn of the century. The city fathers came up with a few suggestions or safety measures. They bought 31 
moonlight towers to spread artificial moonlight on the city streets. Why is it called a moon tower anyway? Uh, I guess they just decided to put it up out here whenever they were building the power plant. Actually, it's a good idea. I mean, you got a full moon out here every day of the year, you know? It said that you're never really dead until someone stops talking about you and telling your story. And as long as we have the breath, we're going to keep telling the truth about these women, these victims, and the harsh realities of their day and time. And we hope that the Moonlight Towers will keep illuminating the streets of Austin and we can keep illuminating the truth about what they went through.